Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official NBA arena rankings of 2024. There are 29 different arenas in the NBA and I will be ranking them worst to first next year. We will have 30 arenas when the Clippers move into the Intuit Dome that is happening in the fall. But let's get into it starting with the worst arena of 2024. It has to be the Delta Center, the home of the Utah Jazz now. The Delta Center, like many of these that are lower on the list, did recently receive kind of a revitalization and they changed out the seats, but the exterior of this stadium is simply an eyesore. It looks like a mid-major college basketball arena. It's just completely brutal. It's a box. They're talking about getting a new arena. And then the interior is even worse. You're talking about a two-deck approach, a bigger upper deck, not in style at all. It is completely ugly. There is not one thing unique about this arena. There used to be one thing unique. They had very nice, kind of weird greenish seats, but they even exchanged those for a more bland color. And it's coming in at 29 in terms of NBA arenas here in 2024. Moving on to number 28, it is the Smoothie King Center, home of the New Orleans Pelicans. This is a concrete mess located right next to the Superdome. The interior is aged, but when it comes to this stadium, we're looking at the exterior. It is brutal. You take a look at that glass paneling. That looks like it's straight from 1983. They did do kind of a half attempt of a renovation, but I would imagine the Pelicans at some point are going to need a new arena. They also got a new Jumbotron like many of these lower tier stadiums. They try and upgrade the Jumbotron. It's understandable. It's something easy to do that really doesn't change the overall stadium aesthetic. And that's why this one comes in at number 28. Moving on to number 27, it is Capital One Arena, home of the Washington Wizards. This is a brutal interior. It's completely aged. The exterior, I just don't even get an arena vibe from looking at the exterior of this thing. They also talked about doing some type of renovation where they're adding, it almost looks like picnic tables behind one of the baskets. What's going on with this arena? They've got the second deck, the dreaded second deck that is completely out of style at this point when it comes to NBA arenas. There is a potential expectation that the Wizards and also the Capitals who currently share this arena will be moving to Northern Virginia. That's something we're going to be watching for and this arena may just completely get to, and this arena might just get demolished although it does host Georgetown basketball either way it's a bottom 5 arena for me in 2024 moving on to number 26 it is the Moda Center the home of the Portland Trail Blazers. The reason this one is so low, it's just got a pathetically bad concrete shell exterior. A weird overhang. that It's just not modern at all. The interior is just as bad. There's nothing special about this arena. What can I say? It comes in at number 26. I'm sorry for picking on the thing, but there's just nothing good about this arena. Maybe you can say the lighting at night is is decent if I'm, I'm trying to be nice with these bottom tier ones moving on to number 25 it is the target center you know i recently saw some photos of the target center's exterior they renovated it you know probably like seven or eight years ago it looks decent i like it you know lit up at night i always say it looks like a giant target and it kind of does. The issue with the Target Center, it's twofold. Number one, the interior is completely out of date. It's got a bigger upper deck. There's really no fixing that. And number two, you've got the monstrosity that is the green roof that just looks horrible on any type of stadium or arena. This was considered for a while the worst arena in the NBA, but I do think the exterior renovation does make it passable to at least move up a few spots, but the interior is still brutal. There's really no... I mean, I guess you technically could try and do a renovation to the interior, but I would guess the next step when it comes to this arena is demolition probably happening in about 8 to 10 years. Moving on to number 24, it is ball arena home of the defending world champion Denver Nuggets this arena hosted the finals it's there's just nothing special about it what can I the interior of this arena the upper deck design is just horrible I'm sorry there's not one unique aspect of it 
Not a fan of the exterior either. Looks like one of those old libraries that was built in 1992. And there has been some dialogue of the Nuggets possibly getting a new arena, although it is very preliminary. Not a big fan of Ball Arena. It comes in very low on my list. Moving on to number 23, it is Frost Bank Center, formerly known as the AT&T Center. This is where the San Antonio Spurs play and it's just got a brutally aged exterior. The interior of this arena, I will say in looking at it, you could make the argument it's a top 15 arena. It's got a decent interior. It's got a bigger lower section. It's got these weird kind of club seats that are about 20 rows up in the lower bowl. I like that. I like unique aspects of arenas, but when it comes to the exterior, it's just such an eyesore. I really can't move it up very high. So that's why it comes in at number 23 for me. Moving on to number 22, it is the Paycom Center, home of the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is better known as Chesapeake Arena. And certainly one of the big positives when it comes to this arena is how loud it got during the playoffs when the Thunder always used to be like a top two or top three seed. They would always make runs and this place would be rocking. This arena has an interesting backstory. It was originally built back in 2001 before the Thunder uh, were even a thing. You know, at that point, the franchise was still in Seattle. They were the Supersonics, and they built this arena kind of as a shell arena. Certainly, they wanted to attract a team, but they did not build a proper number of suites. Also, there were other things that were missing on the interior. There's not too many unique aspects of it, and that's why Oklahoma City has already announced they do uh, plan on building a new arena possibly by 2029, the Paycom Center. If there was one word to describe it, it's just bland. Although, again, I will say they do do a really good job of trapping noise in that arena. They had really good playoff crowds there. Moving on to number 21, it is the Wells Fargo Center. Now, the Wells Fargo Center did also recently undergo a renovation. If you want to talk about twins, I would say Capital One Arena and the Wells Fargo Center are twins. However, the Wells Fargo Center, after the renovation, the exterior does look a little better. Although, you be the judge, looking at the renderings versus the final product... I don't think they got their money's worth. Let's just say that. And then the interior of it, it's just not that good of a design in my opinion. There's no natural light. It's an older design. It's an older arena. The 76ers are already planning on replacing it with a new arena possibly by 2031. Uh, moving on to number 20, it is the Toyota Center. So the Toyota Center, I do like the interior. I think the interior design of the Toyota Center is unique. It has one, you're kind of a smaller upper deck. Really, honestly, no upper deck. The second deck is very close to the action. I like that, and it's got a bigger lower bowl. The one key issue with the Toyota Center, it's the exterior. It's the circle design. I think it looks brutal. I think the Toyota Center, Center logo looks really cheap. It just looks like an old arena. It is what it is. It comes in at number 20 for me. Not the worst thing in the world. We're starting to get into the really average arenas. I do like the red seating because at least it gives it a little bit of character. Goes with the Houston Rockets vibe. I'm feeling that. I'm putting it at number 20 at this point. Moving on to number 19, it is the Footprint Center. A lot of people have a weird vendetta against this arena. And I don't mind it, honestly. It's got a smaller upper deck. I like the seat color. The big issue is like the half circle, you know, glass exterior, which I think is just a completely obsolete design. But I'm not, I don't have a big issue with the footprint center personally. I will say this is another one that's just a little bit aged. It did get a renovation. I'm putting it at number 19 at this point. It is the home of the Phoenix Suns. Moving on to number 18, it is the Spectrum Center. So the Spectrum Center, I do really like the exterior. The interior is just super bland, and unfortunately, that's what you'll get with a lot of these NBA arenas. However, it has been announced that the Spectrum Center will be receiving a big-time, multi, you know, $200 million renovation in the coming years. They're going to take out some of the upper deck seats. Unfortunately, I don't think they're adding too many uh, natural light windows, which is one of the things I really like when it comes to NBA 
NBA arena. Also, the upper deck formation isn't the greatest, the way it kind of jets out and there's just a mass wall in, in terms of upper deck seatings. Also, the lower bowl formation is very strange as well, uh, but because the exterior is pretty nice, I decided to bump it to number 18. It's an average stadium at this point. Moving on to number 17, it is the United Center. If you want to talk about a depressing arena, this thing is just a concrete dome. That, that's what it looks like from the exterior of the United Center. I think it's one of the most bland arenas in the NBA. There is not one unique aspect of the interior of this arena. Honestly, looking at it, maybe I should have put it a little bit lower, but I'm going to say it's number 17 on the list. Moving on to number 16, it is the FedEx Forum, home of the Memphis Grizzlies. This is another one that is scheduled to get a big-time renovation. It does get relatively loud, especially for playoff games at the FedEx Forum. I kind of like the way the seats work in the lower sections, uh, so I decided to, listen, these are average arenas, what do you want from me? I'm trying to fill words and, and say stuff about them, uh, but the, the seating color matches the Grizzlies, I like the design, it's unique. I, I will say that second deck is just completely obsolete. That would never be designed today. You would have a much bigger lower bowl. There'd be basically no second deck. It'd just be a bunch of suites, and then you'd have a smaller upper deck. The upper deck uh, area, it's not a big issue. The main problem is that middle section uh, in, in terms of this arena. Moving on to number 15, it is State Farm Arena. So this one, it, it's another one. It's a love-hate situation. Love the interior. Love the remodel. Love the balconies. Love kind of all the different compartment seating. It's got an amazing looking interior. But it's that Atlanta sign. Oh my god, is that ugly. Who thinks that's a good idea? I saw. I was talking about this in another video and people were de defending this. It just looks bad. You can't even tell that those are A's. It is not a good design. Just get rid of it and I'll move this inside of my top 10. I seriously will. But the sign is just so ugly and it just, it, it blocks off the whole front of the arena. So I've got it at number 15. I think they did a good job with the natural light. They did a good, a good job with the renovation. Uh, but for me, it comes in at number 15 because of the exterior. Moving on to number 14, this is smack dab in the middle. American Airlines Arena, home of the Dallas Mavericks. Another one that's a love-hate. I love the exterior. The brick is amazing. One of the best exteriors in the NBA. But what is going on with the interior? The upper deck is like cramped up against a concrete wall. It just seems stuffy. It seems out of place. The seating behind the baskets I don't love. So the interior to me really brings down what would be a very nice arena if the interior was done right. There have been some rumors maybe... The Mavericks might consider getting a new arena. We will see. Moving on to number 13, it is the Skoda Bank Arena, home of the Toronto Raptors. I've always liked their exterior design, kind of with the Jurassic Park Raptor theme, you know, the watch parties during the playoff games on the outside of it. They really were a trailblazer in terms of like the whole idea of an arena district or a stadium district. The interior of this stadium, it's decent, it's not the best, but it is certainly unique. When you watch a Toronto Raptors game on TV, you immediately can distinguish just the court design and the overall seating design. So I will say it is pretty unique in that aspect. Also, kind of unique factor in terms of the upper deck being a different shape going all the way around. I do like that. And it comes in at number 13 for me. Moving on to number 12, it is the TD Garden, home of the Boston Celtics. I will say, if they would have kept that checkerboard seat design, this would be top five. I just loved that seat design because it was so unique. But they changed it to one, you know, uniformed color. And I don't know, I just, I don't love this arena. I know a lot of people do vouch for it when they go there in person. It's got a nice exterior in terms of where it's located right by the water. It's a compact look, maybe like a better version of the United Center, at least the exterior design is. The interior is a lot better, uh, but in general, it's a fine arena. It is what it is. It comes in at number 12. Moving on to number 11, it is the Kia Center. In Orlando, Florida, very nice exterior design, relatively newer stadium. 
I'm not in love with the interior, especially the upper deck design. Kind of reminds me of Ball Arena with the way the you, that you can kind of see the smaller staircases. I think that's just such a tacky design for an arena. I would never have something like that if I was designing uh, my own arena. And also the middle section, kind of obsolete. But overall, it is a very nice exterior. It looks really good, lit up at night. Very nice presentation. Relatively new. It comes in at number 11 on this list. Moving on to number 10, it is the Miami Heat FTX. Well, it was formerly called FTX Arena. Um, it, it's called something different now, but this is such a good arena. It fits so well to the whole South Beach vibe with the white on the exterior. It's a good design. And then the interior of the arena, one of the more unique ones with the different color waves, all bright colors, kind of the heat flame colors, uh, very unique seating design with the upper deck kind of not going all the way around, different sections of it cut off. I really do like this arena. And then, of course, you do have kind of that retro. You can see this on TV, the little retro scoreboards above the tunnels. That's just another little intricate detail that makes this arena so cool. Also, the location being right next to the water. It is a top 10 arena for me. Also, you've got a nice just circular design, kind of uneven layers on top. Just kind of a cool cork to it. Moving on to number nine, it is the Barclays Center. Very polarizing arena. Over a billion dollars is what it cost. Relatively new. Certainly the most unique exterior in terms of the weird design. Quite honestly, this has the potential for me at least to be a top five arena just based off of the exterior because I find it so cool and unique. And especially when it's lit up, it looks amazing. The issue is the roof of it. So they decided to put the green grass on the roof, and I understand you're trying to incorporate green with a city. It just doesn't work. If you were to have some type of chrome roof there on the top, I think it would be amazing, but that brings it down a little bit. The interior of it, to me, just feels really cramped. That's just the feel I get when it comes to the Barclays Center. I wonder how how big the actual entire arena is compared to other NBA arenas. It just seems really on top of everything, which you would think would make for a better atmosphere, but it doesn't. I mean, when is the last time we've heard the Brooklyn Nets have like an amazing home crowd? I'm not attacking Nets fans, but it just seems like there's never any atmosphere in this arena, but it is modern. It is nice. It has a very cool looking exterior. I will put it at number nine on my list. Moving on to number eight. It is the Gainbridge Fieldhouse, believe it or not. Yes, home of the Indiana Pacers. This is the arena that is hosting the All-Star Game this year here in 2024. And they just recently got a renovation. It looks beautiful. I love the aspect of it being a field house with the natural light. It looks completely different from every other NBA arena. It's just a sweet factor. And this is another arena that is very different from every other NBA arena because it kind of acts almost as like a college level type thing, at least from the exterior and then with that natural light as well. To me, you know, it's a solid top 10 arena based on the recent renovations. I know a lot of people would disagree with that. It's all subjective, but it's just a unique thing that I like. I, I'm someone that really likes the unique arenas and also the newer arenas when it comes to the NBA. Moving on to number seven, it is Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, formerly the Q located in Cleveland, Ohio. And how about the exterior renovation that this arena got? Just beautiful design, and I've always loved the interior of the queue. Now, this one is unique to where it does have a very large second deck. Normally with arenas, they'll either have no second deck or a smaller second deck, but Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse has a bigger second deck. It kind of doesn't deserve to be called a fieldhouse because there is no natural light that gets let into it. I just always think of a fieldhouse as like there being some type of window, but either way, after the renovation, the exterior looks amazing. I love the seats, the cushion seats, the color, you know, the dark red to match the calves. It just looks so good. It presents really well. The only other issue is... There's like something to where, because it also hosts hockey, 
Some of the seats are movable, which makes for, it kind of just looks weird on TV, but in general, I really like this arena. It doesn't hurt that it has a massive new, or at least semi-new Jumbotron that they got a little less than a decade ago. It comes in at number seven for me. Moving on to number six, in terms of NBA arenas in 2024, it is Little Caesars Arena. So we're on to the ultra-new arenas now, Little Caesars Arena, great modern interior. How about the sweet? levels almost or what are those club levels almost onto the roof really interesting design there and you also do have the color changing roof which is another really cool factor another thing that a lot of people don't know the concourses there's a lot of natural light it's almost like there's a translucent roof throughout that's another cool thing the only negative I have about this arena is it's got to be the roof design with the Little Caesars Arena thing. I understand. I, I get it. It's a marketing ploy. It just looks so bad. I'm sorry. There's no way. It looks really cheap to me. But nonetheless, it's a very nice interior. It's a brand new arena. And at this point, it comes in at number six. Moving on to number five, it is Crypto.com Arena. Home of both the Lakers and Clippers. Of course, that's changing with the Clippers moving to the Intuit Dome. But this one, you know, located in LA, I just think they did a great job on the exterior lighting. It just looks so good. And then the arena itself really transforms when it dims for Laker games. It just looks like a much better presentation. The actual interior design, there's a lot of suites. There's a very smaller upper deck and they are possibly getting a renovation where they're going to cut out one of the areas in the upper deck and put in natural light, a window. That's going to really improve it as well. But in general, I just like the exterior. It just screams LA. It screams box office. The way it lights up is really cool. So I'm going to throw it in there at number five on my list. Moving on to number four, it is Madison Square Garden. A lot of people would argue this should be number one. You look at the exterior, the circular design, it's the Mecca, and it's certainly unique. It's got an amazing interior roof, two walls of seats spanning, and then an upper suite level on top of that. There's nothing wrong you can say about Madison Square Garden. It's just, it, it's very, it, it feels like a legendary NBA arena. And it definitely has that old style going for it. You could argue it should be number one, maybe number two. It's kind of like the MLB Stadium argument with Fenway and Wrigley Field. It's legendary. You know, I, I was originally going to put it at number three, but I've slotted it at number four in terms of this list. Moving on to number three, it is the Chase Center. This is a brand new NBA arena, home of the Golden State Warriors. It's got a really nice exterior design. Kind of reminds me of the Miami Heat's arena, just looking at it. And then the interior of it, I mean, the only negative thing I have about this one, it's just kind of bland, but it, it's really not the Warriors' fault. All of these new arenas kind of have that problem to where they're bland. This one, though, it certainly fits the exact design of a modern arena. You've got the bigger lower bowl, you've got the suite level, really no middle section, and then a smaller upper deck after that, and, and a nice exterior. The only reason this one, you know, is not number two or number one, I'm just not a big fan of the exterior design. I think in terms of a brand new arena, it leaves a little bit to be desired, and the top two ones, which are also new arenas, are a lot better. And moving on to number two, it is the Pfizer Forum. I just love the exterior design. It looks like a burrito to me, and it just looks so cool with the lighting, especially at night. This is home of the Milwaukee Bucks. You also do have that nice glass exterior. It just looks really good. It's got a massive lower section, and the design of this is exactly what they're trying to do to where there's basically no upper deck. This is like the Intuit Dome's design. You've got a huge lower section, and then it's almost like a mid-tier deck, and that's it. Now, technically, that mid-tier deck does operate as the upper deck, but in general, this is the exact design you would want. This is a really nice arena. It also hosts Marquette Basketball as well, and it comes in at number two for me in terms of my arena rankings. Moving on to number one, the best arena in the NBA for the 2024 season. It is the Golden One Center, home of the Sacramento Kings. Beautiful exterior kind of metal design that I really like. The interior of it, very impressive, especially with the natural light edition, extremely modern, my personal favorite arena. It's a combination of both the interior and the exterior, but ma mainly the exterior. I think the exterior looks amazing. Like, if you compare the Golden One Center to the new Intuit Dome, just look at the outside of them like an aerial shot. 
I don't know how you can argue that the Intuit Dome is better. Just from looking at it, the Golden One Center, it's got such a unique kind of almost like stop sign design. And then also going around that, you've got kind of like metal. I just think it's such a cool design. And it comes in at number one for me on NBA arenas in 2024. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.